What's the connection between Mount Everest and a town in Wales? We're going to answer that question today. Yes, folks, we're in Krikawal. Beautiful town, right on the edge of Abergavenny area, about two miles upriver from there. And today, when the sun shines, it's glorious. But when it doesn't, I've got my brolly because we're having showers. But we do have showers in Wales, that's why it's so lush and green. But there is so much in this town. Not only is there a connection with Mount Everest, but also this town played its part in the coronation of a king, which is very topical because it's bank holiday Monday today, but next week we're having another bank holiday because it's going to be the coronation of King Charles III. So lots of interesting things to discover as we go around the town. But we can start right here, because this big old wall behind me, it's what's left of the castle. Another Norman castle, built by the de Tuberville's family in 1121, thereabouts. Probably took a couple of years to build, but of course it wasn't this building that they put up. The original would have been higher up on the ridge there, looking out over the town, which today is full of shops and properties, but then would have been a very different view. And they built a wooden fort type structure there. Then it was replaced. 150 years later, up went the stone castle. And there it stood. A place of grandeur, a place of authority, control of the community in the area. But then a little while later, 1400, they decided they'd better toughen up the battlements here, make it stand strong, because there was a Welsh uprising. Owen Glyndwr again, yes, he is responsible for more demolished castles in Wales, I think, than any other single person. But of course, by default, he is also able to take the credit for the redevelopment of Crickowell. Because Crickowell now has so many properties, beautiful stone, all taken from the castle. So as we go around the town today, many of the stone buildings you'll see, you'll realise, were built out of stone from here. But there are still small pieces left as a mark of what once stood so grand in this location. But today, this is a park. It's a park in which adults walk and take their dogs. Also, there is a play area specifically designed for children to have fun. And that's not by accident. It's not a whim of the local authority. It's by the wishes of a man called Mr. James. Mr. James owned this land. He owned the ruins and he gave it to the town for the specific purpose of the leisure of adults and for the fun and entertainment of children to play. And he did that in 1917, after his son, a lieutenant in the army, lost his life in the Great War. And in order to mark as a memento, as a memorial to his son, he decided to give the castle and let other people's children play here and enjoy their freedom and their leisure. So if this is just the beginnings of our visit, I think that Krikowal is going to be a wonderful place, not only for Caroline and I to see on this bank all day Monday, but also to share with all of you. And I will let you know as we travel around what the connection is between this place and Mount Everest and how the people of the town were involved in a coronation of a king some years ago. And Phil was saying about how they were using parts of the castle to build the houses here. Look at this. I wonder why they call it Tower Street. Hmm, there's a subliminal message there, I think. Oh, look at that. 
There's a dog in there. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Yep, I could be happy there. How about that for a day's res? Oh yes, I could quite enjoy living there. What about you? Are you more a fan of a lovely little cottage? With a very pretty frontage. Or oh, what about this quaint one? Flowers in the front garden. Gorgeous shape to that. And they've got a fabulous garden out there too. Mm, very nice. I love all the window boxes. It's springs. We've got ranunculus, pansies, carnations. Oh, I think they're pinks. Lovely. Oh, I bet it's lovely up in that room there with the little semicircular window. Oh, every girl's dream of a fairy tale bedroom. Now that is some impressive topiary. Mm. Let's get a bit closer. Have a look. Wow, that must take forever. It's so neat and tidy. It belongs to Little Malt House. And, oh, look at that. It's not very little, is it? Quite a nice size, that. And I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but it's like a salmon pinky colour. It's a bit noisy, but I still thought you'd like to see what houses are on offer. We've got this one in Langos. Offers in the region of 535,000. That one sold for 450,000. And a nice little bungalow there for 295,000. Oh, that's very nice. 495,000. And another little bungalow there. It's a semi detached, 285,000. A nice conservatory. It does. I like that one, I think. I'm not sure, but I think I, less, I don't know why, but I like it. That's in Brecon, and that's 480,000. Now, Caroline's been fancying quite a few houses, not only in the estate agent's window, but also as she's been walking along, including this one, as it happens. But there's a cracking big house just on the edge of town. And that is now the Manor Hotel. But it's not always been in a hotel. It used to be the proud possession of a Mr. Everest. He was a lawyer from Greenwich in London. His father was a lawyer. His grandfather was a butcher. But Mr. Everest did very well for himself and bought his estate here in Krakowal, and that was his home. He had six children, but his eldest son was George Everest, who at 16 years of age, who at 16 years of age, traveled to India and began work in a surveyor's office. He rose through the ranks and eventually was in charge of all the surveying department throughout India. And it was that surveying department that actually did the work in order to plot the mountain range that lies along the edge of India and Nepal which includes what we call Mount Everest. It was simply known by a number for many years, but when they came to give it a name, it was the man who took over from George Everest that put his name forward. And that's how we have Mount Everest today, named after a man from Krakow, a Welsh man, admittedly family from London, but his home was here. The interesting thing is on that story is when they told him they were going to name the mountain after him, he originally objected on two grounds. One, he had been in charge, but he was not the one who did the surveying. And in fact, it's believed he never actually laid eyes on Mount Everest at all. Two, he was also concerned that they were using his name which was difficult to translate into the Hindi language and for the people locally to say. And I think it is a nice thought that he was concerned that the local people should really be choosing the name for their mountain. But Everest it was, Everest it is, and there's your link between Crick Owl and the biggest mountain in the world. As we were walking through into the street here, we met two gentlemen both motorbike enthusiasts. They were telling us that the reason we see so many lovely motorbikes today is because the road through Crickowell and to Crickowell is a road that is favored by bikers. They love to ride it. 
So, Mankey wanted to know if the man would let him have a little go on his bike. And I'm pleased to say the nice gentleman said yes. So Mankey is chuffed to bits because he got to get a little sit on a Royal Enfield. Now, here we are, right at the entry point to the town. This road bridge behind me, it isn't very wide. They've got traffic lights controlling it, so that one lane of traffic can travel at a time. But boy, don't there be a lot of cars coming over that river. Because this is a very busy thoroughfare. And the bridge itself, crossing the Esk, is the longest stone river bridge in Wales. So that's one of its claims to fame. But it's also a bit of a weird bridge because it's had alterations over the years. First mention of this bridge was 1558. But then in the 1700s, it got redeveloped. And in the 1800s, believe it or not, it got widened. Now I find that hard to believe when I see how narrow it is. But in the widening, things got a little bit strange because this bridge upstream is a 12 arch bridge, but downstream looking up, it's a 13 arch bridge. Now, I don't know if the people doing the extension decided the 13 wasn't a very lucky number. Goodness knows the reasoning, but that's the fact so it makes it unusual. Then, of course, the first building as you come off that bridge is a public house. And that pub has a name that you will see so often all over the country in that particular location. It's called the Bridge End. So not a great deal of original thought, perhaps, went in to naming that particular pub. And somewhere in there is a man with a very large hammer and a piece of metal and he's hitting it just to drive us bananas. Sorry about the banging. Right behind me, the Bridge End pub. And there are pubs throughout this town, as there are in all the towns of Wales and England, Ireland, Scotland, and uh, probably similar around the world. This pub, we're talking 16th century. We go just up the road, there's another beautiful building, the Dragon Inn. That again is around from the 1500s. But the pub I'm interested in is the Bear Hotel. Because at the Bear Hotel, I can give you the link with the coronation of a king. Now, when we look at the pub today, the Bear, that hotel, you're talking Georgian. It's gorgeous and it's old and you can see even the sign right in above the archway where the horses and carriages would go through and be stabled at the back and it screams of so much history and has so much to tell but behind that facade there is even more history because we're talking 1430 and there was a pub there and it's in that public house in 1485 that the soldiers are reputed to have taken their last drink before heading off to join Edward VII, who had just returned from exile and landed in Pembrokeshire. And of course, he was then successful in his battle for the throne and he became King Edward VII. 
So that's how Krakowal is linked to a coronation of a king. But it was quite a long time ago. As you can see, lots of celebrations for the upcoming coronation. Charles and Camilla theme everywhere. Even sheepy bags. Sheepies. look what you can buy in this shop oh there's a big hotel and we got some cacti and some false flowers there they're definitely into their bug hotels they are i know a young man who loves bug hotels young oliver so shall we just pop down to abergavenny i said it's only down the road and pay him a little visit now as we head down to abergavenny it'll only take us a few minutes we're going to show you a clip of video because this is Oliver in action. If this is his very first ever attempt at making a video, I think this young man has got a future on YouTube. What do you think? Check it out. Hello, my name is Oliver and I've been mugged like in today and I want to show you my special finds. First thing coming up is the stopper. The stopper is precious to me because sometimes we find them and it can, kind of played a trick on me because there's a black area over there and then I didn't even know it was there. Next is coming up, a, you might think it's a bit boring, but a Scrabble counter which kind of reminds me of my mum who I love the most and next you're going to be shocked of this, whoever's going to watch this video. A bird. How shocking is that? How shocking is it? How shocking is it to find a bird? Right, next is an Asda token. Now, I like my tokens a lot. And now, sorry, but this is the last find. And it's tiny. This is a button which my mum found and I really really like it so thank you for watching the video so give us a like and make sure to look at our video. Thank you, goodbye. Well folks I hope you enjoyed that little video as much as we did. What an amazing guy but now we've got to find him. We've heard that he's here, somewhere along the river, in Abergavenny. So let's go see, where's Oliver? Hmm, we seem to have some mudlarkers down here by this river. Hello. 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 <laughs> Lovely to see you. Yes, we've been searching for you. We heard you were on the river. So we came searching for you. How are you? Is that a good surprise? Yeah, well, we've, been, we've been filming in Krakow oh, today, wonderful. doing the Krakow yeah. Castle. So we thought we'd pop down and I told everybody we're going to have a look for Oliver. So there we go, we found you. Yay! Oh. Time for the discovery. Huh? Oh, what have you got? Oh, they're nice. I like that blue and white one. And next to it. That's a really interesting button too. Yep. You I just really found it under the bridge. Oh, it's easy as that. Yep. <laughs> You're very good at this. Yep. So how long have you been medlarking today? You just got here? We just got here, I feel like. But it, right. we haven't. We've been about 20 We'd minutes. Up there. Right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, popping back in there. They goes feeling completely unsuitable footwear. Up the river. <laughs> and as long as he doesn't land in the fourth at the time. All right, they're on a brick retrieval mission. I found a brick. Well done, Oliver. What was one of those candle holders? Ah. Uh, or pencil holders? And what's on it? Anything written? No, it's just that's a oh. boldy one. Oh, 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 oh. Holes. Oh, 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 oh. Holes. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Thank you. He might use it in his herd garden. Oh, nice. no. Yeah. 
Oh, oh we got no! Ah, oh, no! Definitely been oh, glad for our game. There we go, brick with a number on. Star Newport. Might be Star Newport, but it's just quite famous. This is Star Newport as well. Oh, yeah. You can see that one right very yeah. clearly. Ah, yeah. Like National Star. There oh, that's why I National couldn't read star. it. Yeah, because yeah, they got Star Cumbra and Star Newport. But that one, that's quite, that's that's less um, popular because lots of them have got Star uh, and Newport and Cumbran, but I haven't seen National Star. That's uh, a good one, that, that is. I tell you what, right? I've got three in my boot uh, that I'd be happy to swap you for that one then. <gasps> Would, do you want to see what three I got? Yes, please. Come on then. We'll go over and have a look in my boot. Uh, Let's have a look what I got. That one. I'm pretty sure came from Blitz Beach oh. up above Liverpool. I know. Oh. That's where, after they'd been bombed, they pushed all the old buildings into a big hole, mm. and now the sea is washing all the bricks mm. and stones out. That one came from there, I believe. Now, I know exactly where this one came from. This is one of my prized possessions. Uh. Do you ever see the video? where I went underground in a cellar, we found a, well, there was no mansion left. It was all gone. It was up in Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Oh. Completely gone, all overgrown, just ruins. But the cellar was still underneath. Wow. And I went down the cellar, and that's the brick I brought out. Ah. Let's have a look for that one. All right. Yeah. So I'll send you the link to that if you want. Yeah. And then third, oh. if you're happy to right. swap, this one is from Splot Beach. Ooh. And that is Glasgow that come from. Wow. That's wow. a Glasgow brick because on Splot Beach, it's all the ruins from the industry. Mm. And they had a lot of ironworks and steelworks. And this is a fire brick. This would have lined one of the furnaces. Ah. And that's why it's a funny shape. But see, Stein, Glasgow. Wow. Ah. So that's what I found that one. So would you think it's fair to do one, two, three for the one I haven't got? Yep. I'm nope. okay. Shake hands. Right. Do a deal. Shake on that. deal. That's the first trade done at the Abergavenny brick swap. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this trip on a bank holiday with us. We've had a great time and what a highlight to meet young Oliver and have a brick swap. My second brick swap, John, we met over in Chepstow. Chepstow. There we are. My memory's <laughs> shocking. And today we're in another car park, but in Abergavenny. Mm. There we go. So, if you have enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Doing, doing, doing. <laughs> and don't forget, till the next time, have fun. Bye. 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 Bye.